to that door there, and about from here to that wall. It's a, it's a cubicle this way, all black, no window. So we're, we, we can't see out now, because you have to have it black because of the scopes that we're looking at to detect the, the other ships and planes. So anyway, we left the treasure island after going to firefighting school and learned how to fight fires aboard ship, and that's a hairy, hairy experience too. So we went down to San, to, uh, San, uh, San Pedro and saw our ship for the first time, went aboard, the following day we put it in the commission, raised the flag for the first time, and uh, all, the whole crew was there, 376, uh, I mean, 360 of us on that ship. And the ship is, is 376 feet long, about as long as a football field. So uh, we got aboard. First thing we had to do was to load it with all the torpedoes, 10 torpedoes, loaded with depth charges, probably 50 depth charges in the back. Uh, all the ammunition for all the all the guns on the ship, loaded with all the food that was necessary to take on the ship for our cruise to the west western Pacific. And then we went out to out the harbor of uh, San Pedro and did a lot of practicing with a weapon and uh, uh, got along very well. And you'll be happy to know that my sea sickness was gone. <laughs> well, I was happy about that. It, I, I got rid of it the first two weeks on that other ship. That was on. And I, I really didn't have any problems with it on. And most of the guys didn't either. So we went out to um, San Clemente Island, uh, off of Southern California, and did some uh, gunnery practice, and uh, practice with all with launch torpedoes and launch depth charges. We fired all the guns on the ship to make sure they worked all right. And we picked up a, 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 an aircraft carrier, I think it was a British aircraft carrier, and uh, escorted that to Pearl Harbor, along with another escort, another, another destroyer. We had to weave back and forth across, and back and front, and back and along the sides, looking for submarines, looking for any other uh, enemy ships, particularly submarines. Uh, then we were in Pearl Harbor for a few days and uh, then headed out to the Western Pacific escorting another aircraft carrier. And uh, our destination then was, it was uh, uh, Ulithi. And if you know where Ulithi is, uh, it's, well, it's a, which part of Charlotte is here? Here we go. On this, on this, this one here, Ulithi, it's right down here at the bottom. It's near the equator opposite the Philippine Islands, and about a thousand miles from Okinawa, which is up here. We didn't know where we were going to head for. We, we know we were going for the Ulithi, but we didn't know we were going to go to Okinawa. So we got to Ulithi, there were more ships than I ever saw in my life. There were, there were just aircraft carriers lined up all over the place. Many, there were 100 destroyers, you know, and uh, uh, cargo ships and troop ships everything you can imagine. That's the assembly point for the largest armada ever established that anybody knows in the world. There were just hundreds and hundreds of ships there. And pretty soon we got the orders and we knew then what, what was going to happen. We were going to escort all of these troop ships, all these cargo ships, all these other aircraft carriers going up all the way up to Okinawa, and we had to get the maps out real quick to find out where that was. And uh, <clears throat> it took the better part of a week to get from here up to there because the, the troop ships and many of the cargo ships don't travel as fast as we can. Our destroyer uh, had the capability of doing 35 knots at least. That's, you know, it added up to 40 mile, more than 40 miles an hour. That's pretty fast for a ship. So we got up here close to Okinawa, say a day and a half away from Okinawa. We're opposite Formosa. Formosa is now Taiwan today, belonging to Chinese. At that time it was Formosa, Jap Japanese owned. And they were loaded in here with kamikazes and uh, uh, were able to get out to, out to where we were when we were approaching Okinawa. And the Japanese knew that we were going to head for Okinawa because a few carriers that were up there in advance started preparing the place, you know, like 
and battleships are up there too, preparing the place for a landing. That is, bombing it with a, a very heavily shore bombardment, trying to soften up the, uh, the defenses of Okinawa. So they knew that we were coming up. Uh, this is where we shot down our first kamikaze, right out here before we got to Okinawa. We got him at night, and he was, uh, he was out there. Uh, we don't know where they were headed for us or not, but he was headed down to one of our ships. So we shot him down. I had nothing to do with it. All I did was detect it on the radar. <coughs> so we, we arrived at Okinawa uh, in uh, early hours of uh, Sunday, Easter Sunday, April Fool's Day, April 1st, all the same day, of 1945. That was the landing day. So here we are at Okinawa. Now, to help orient you a little bit, this over here is uh, Iwo Jima, which is approximately opposite Okinawa. Here is Saipan, down here, Guam, Tinian. Tinian is a place where the Air Force, Army Air Corps at that time, not the Air Force, we didn't have an Air Force, it was an Army Air Corps, launched all the B-29 raids on Tokyo. They started down here at Tinian and Saipan, and uh, made that run up there about a thousand miles uh, or more. And they had Iwo Jima as a stopping place if they got shot at or, or damaged and had to land for air incapacitated aircraft. So they, they had, we took Iwo Jima many months before, so that would be a good landing place for them. And as we got Okinawa, that was also a landing place for them, a little closer than Iwo Jima from the southern part of Kyushu. Uh, Okinawa is 300 miles, more or less, depending on where you start and where you end, but 300 and some miles from Kyushu. Kyushu is the place where uh, most of the kamikazes came after us and after the landing areas in, on Okinawa. They all came mostly from Kyushu. Some of them came from Formosa, too. So, up here, I've got a chart, which is Okinawa only. This is the island of Okinawa, about uh, 60 miles long, approximately, and if we average all these uh, varying widths here, average about 8 miles wide, so 480 miles, 480 square miles of land, the island of Okinawa. The landing areas were here on this beach. You can't see over there very well. Uh, the the la landing areas were here on this beach. So when we approached the lower end of Okinawa, the trip ships went on their own because they were under control of the landing parties over here. And we were then patrolling out here for submarines and, uh, and kamikazes because we didn't want submarines to come in here and shoot up a trip ship. That wouldn't be so good. <coughs> you can kill uh, you know, a thousand men real quick if you sink a trip ship. So all of these lines out here are en ending at a dot. And those are what's called radar picket stations. Each one of these stations, and they're not all shown on here because this is an early chart and uh, they didn't have all the stations. But there were some other in intermediate stations here. And each one of these uh, radar picket stations had uh, two, um, two destroyers and maybe some landing craft in there which were heavily armed also. Uh, the objective of all of these radar picket stations, one objective, dual objective, to keep the people down here at the landing areas informed of what was coming in the line of kamikazes, and also to destroy as many as you can before they get there. Um, kamikaze started in the Philippine Islands uh, a few months before, and the Japanese found out that they were very successful. So they, they, they concentrated their efforts on destroying the American forces in this area by using kamikazes. And the, the word kamikaze started because way back in 1260 or something like that, Kublai Khan, a Mongolian Chinese emperor, decided that he wanted to take over Japan. Uh, so he sent a big armada of wooden ships, of course, in the 1200s, sent a big armada 
toward Japan, to, to, to capture Japan. But at the same time, unbeknown to them, because the weather reports weren't too accurate in those days, uh, a big typhoon came up and swept over Japan and sunk all Kubakan ships, all the wooden ships. Sunk them. So Japan was, of course, pretty well delighted about that, and they call that a divine wind. So the word kamikaze means divine wind. And the Japanese wanted to have a divine wind hit the American forces to prevent them from taking Japan. So they, they called all these people who were, who were willing to do it and they